and Lifestyle Party 1 of 2 in Queensland. Hello, Michael. Uh, hey, John, how are you? Have you got your surgical gloves on? Um, I've got some off. Scalpel in hand. I've got a work to eat. Now, let's talk about Saturday. Yeah, it was a great day, wasn't it? Well, tell me about it. I mean, uh, are you happy with that result? Oh, we're, we're over the moon, John. I think the first thing is the political process is alive and well in Australia. It was lovely to see uh, the passion of all the workers at all the booths from, with their various uh, philosophies. And in, in general, it was all done, conducted in good spirit. And uh, lovely to see a lot of youth, the youthful people out there, young people getting involved in the political process. So I think, uh, for me, it's so important that our democracy is respected and that... Uh, Instead of the Australian cringe where we don't discuss politics and religion, we start to discuss politics all the time because politics is life, John. And, yeah. uh, and we need to we need to uh, canonise that and uh, and uh, be much more respectful of our process. I think. Now, specifically, the Australian Fishing and Lifestyle Party, the results on Saturday. Give us an idea of what happened. Well, we, we were very happy. We polled 37,000 primary votes. The fishers and shooters, 30,000. So that's 60,000 primary votes. It's one point, uh, we, our vote was 1.95%, which doesn't sound a lot. But it's double what we have achieved in the past. And when uh, this went to the uh, ballot process to... Uh, select a Senate candidate, we actually picked up 230,000 or 12.5% of the uh, preference votes, which makes it a very significant contribution. And uh, and we were the last party standing with the LMP when we got to the uh, Senator's position, and uh, they got the sixth Senator, but we defeated everyone else along the wow. way. So it was a, a remarkable achievement. Michael, is this a work in progress? I mean, is this going to continue into future elections at the federal level? Oh, I think at every level, John, we, we've got an awful lot to offer the electorate. I think uh, our philosophy of, uh, of, of responsible interaction with the environment and using uh, positive policies uh, uh, and informing the public so that they can make, they can debate the issues and make informed decisions, sticking, getting away from personal denigration of other politicians, trying to get some respect back into the uh, into the process, and and looking at the multiplicity of ways in which uh, we are. Uh, denied our rights in this country and just trying to get some some common sense back into the electorate which I think I think we managed to do uh, in our small way and and uh, and I think the vote and the enthusiasm for our party in such a short time uh, attests to I uh, talked this is before the election with Bob Catter and he brought up an issue about well not an issue he used the term a couple of weeks ago the freedom issue and what he was talking about were many of the points that you brought up and Rob Erskine have brought up in the last few weeks. And it's about the things you no longer are allowed to do by law. And the point he makes is you're not even allowed to boil your, boil your billy anymore. That's how un-Australian things have become. Years ago, the Greens got off the ground by tapping into areas that they believed the major parties had neglected. I'm wondering if you're going to do something similar. If this is a work in progress and you continue to attract support from people that feel, well, the major parties are not protecting our rights, they're not protecting our freedoms, what could the future hold for the Australian Fishing and Lifestyle Party? Oh, look, yeah, I think there's a great need, as expressed on Saturday, for the political process to become much less... Uh, uh, spin orientated and, and stick to the facts and to come up with positive solutions for many aspects of the Australian lifestyle and, uh, and uh, at present of course the, the adversarial nature of our politics and the short parliamentary terms means that uh, politicians of necessity are looking over their shoulder the next election, they're making policy on the run and they're pandering to uh, uh, interest groups to try and shore up block votes and and that that is a process which we have to look at the grass, you know, the, the basis of, and try and and try and get our politics much much more uh, broadly based and much less adversarial and more consensus, so that it's Australia in the long run that benefits from the decisions that are made. And so yeah, we've got a lot to offer because that is our philosophy to engage professional uh, people in the areas of interest that we we have and look at the facts and then try and dispassionately put those facts to the electorate. And, and encourage political debate. You know, we're not out to, uh, to coerce people into doing things. We're out to putting the facts out there and, mm. and letting the electorate get involved and the electorate make the decision, which is the democratic process. Mm. Interesting is that so often you can juxtapose your uh, views. And I mean, you were a leading environmentalist for many years, probably the most high-profile environmentalist here in North Queensland, and yet I hear, I think it was Larissa Waters on Sunday saying, you know, what I'm about is saving the Great Barrier Reef. And 
They've lost the plot, haven't they? Well, they tell me about that. For 8,000 years, it looks after itself perfectly well. Cyclones come along all the time, and we have to use nuclear weapons to replicate the damage they make. And the ecosystem of the Barrier Reef is robust, and it just bounces back and, and is in pristine condition. No one's saving the Barrier Reef. All we are getting from uh, people uh, in that industry is doom and gloom and uh, making up stories about false threats to the reef for which they can get a massive funding for inappropriate and unnecessary repair work. I mean, we're not into that. You know, we're into presenting the facts. And, and uh, the fact is that we're a maritime nation. We've got the third biggest water seas in the world. They're teeming with fish which are in pristine condition apart from a few. And yet we import... 70% of our seafoods, much lower quality than we can produce, cost us $1.8 billion, and, and Larissa Waters has got to find somewhere to pay for that, and it's going to be a non-renewable resource, either dig up more coal or whatever, you know, and uh, so we've got to address this balance. There's obviously a big, big problem there when that, that is, those are the facts. And, uh, you know, we're about sensible policies which employ Australians in, in, in rewarding employment and also prosper our country by sustainably using renewable resource, and that's the epitome of good environmental policy. Michael, you talked at the beginning of this discussion about the importance to, as you put it, canonise democracy. Now, just put aside the balance of power in the hands of three independents, almost certainly, for the moment. By July 1st next year, the balance of power in the Senate, the upper house, will be in the hands of the Greens. Now, you're saying democracy is critically important, it works, and we've got to respect it and respect the people in it. Will you be able to sort through, with your concerns quite clearly outlined a minute or so ago, will you be able to wake, work through those issues with, for example, the Greens holding the balance of power in the upper house from July 1st next year? Well, John, you know, you've got to take a longer-term view, haven't you? They've achieved the uh, result, and uh, you have to ex respect the... Uh the organisation and the funding and uh, the message they put out, we don't agree with the message and it was our task to convince the electorate that their message is inappropriate for this country. In the meantime, uh, our system is alive and well. Uh, we do have three independents who have the, the possibility of, uh, of having the, the uh, balance of power at present. But uh, we have seen an election where the Australian people have spoken and they weren't in favour of the, ele of the process of the policies that were presented to them before. Uh, they haven't made up their minds about the, the alternate policies, but the process is ongoing and there is little doubt that this situation is not going to be long term. I mean, no one is going to... Our democracy won't stand a situation where the lower house is blocked by the upper house continuously and there are mechanisms there for resolution of that problem. But what is apparent is this has generated an enormous amount of interest in the community. People with passions in all directions have come out and expressed their views. And it is a working system, and it is far better than any system that I can see elsewhere. Sure. So, you know, it's got its failings. We're all, every one of us has got a different opinion of where the world should go. We've all got our own roadmap, all beautiful in our own way. So you can't expect us to have uh, consensus on everything. And so I don't see uh, this as a problem. I see it as uh, a short-term situation which is going to work itself out one way or the other. Australian Fishing and Lifestyle Party, will it play a role in the forthcoming state election in about 15 months' time? Yeah, most certainly. I mean, uh, if you look down the coast, John, you can see what happened. Uh, we are credited with influencing the result in eight lower house seats, House of Representatives seats on the coast of Queensland and New South Wales. We've done this on a shoestring. We were only re-registered three months ago. We've got over a 1,000 members now. We struggled for funding and uh, we didn't have time to organise ourselves. But you can rest assured that there's no political per party in Australia who will ever take the fishing lob lobby lightly again. We have achieved what we set out to do. We have put the fishing story, the our marine resource uh, industry, on the national agenda, and anyone who ignores it will do so at their peril in the future. And we have, if you you know, if you go to our website, look at our policies. We're not a single issue party. We have a broad range of policies, and they are getting broader all the time. And uh, we will be there for the state election. We'll be highly organised by then, and we'll be there for the next federal election, Australia wide. Uh, we had enormous support coming from the whole country. Everyone in the country is terrified 
of the proposal to look up 50%, 57% of our waters, stop fishing in 30% of those, and to continue uh, denigrating our fishermen and relying on food security from other countries we can't even feed ourselves. And that extends to our rural industries as well. I mean, this isn't localised to fishing. It just happens to be where this was focused because of the origin of this party in Cairns. It's a registered Australian registered party, the only one registered in Queensland. And of course...